<laughs> Hi, my name is John Fidel, and uh, this is episode 12 of the Boys Don't Knit Knitting podcast. Uh, so for all of the new viewers, welcome to my podcast. This is a knitting, crochet, weaving, spinning, pretty much um, sewing, uh, a lot of different types of um, uh, crafts. Uh, primarily focus on knitting and spinning. So, and when I do sew stuff, it's usually bags for my knitting and spinning or crochet. <laughs> uh, and then for all of my returning viewers, thank you for coming back. Uh, so, this video, I don't have a lot of progress to show off because I, even though I was, I've been kind of busy. I really haven't gotten a whole lot done. I haven't really knitted since not this past Friday, but the Friday before. So that's already, we're near two weeks since I last knitted. Um, well, no, like a week and a half because I knitted two days ago. And I realized that I need to just go to my local yarn shop, sit down and just start knitting. Just go down and start knitting and just always visit there just in case I don't make it to one of my um, stitch and bitches that I go on Friday nights with um, this really great group of girls that I know and love to death so because I just when I once I missed that first one I just didn't want to do anything and then I missed the second meeting and I just didn't I just fell like in this really rough spot where I just didn't want to knit or crochet or craft or do anything. Um, part of that had to do with my organization problem that I talked about last week. So, like I said, not too much progress. I did a little bit of progress on that hat that I'm doing for the store sample. Um, but one thing I do have to show that is knitting related is the stash enhancement, which is this. It is. Uh, See if I can get it to focus. It is the Anzula hand dyed yarn. It's Nebula. As you kind of see, it is. Um... Oh, it's super bright. Let me see if I can. There we go. That's kind of a little bit true to color, right about there. So as you can see, it has a lot of blues, pinks. Uh, coral green it's called jawbreaker so it has it is 84% superwash merino 16% sparkling stellina colorways jawbreaker I think this is like a sock weight it comes from 400 yards so you can machine wash on gentle or you can hand wash and then you would lay it flat to dry but it's called jawbreaker it's super soft as all in Zula is I love it love it um, don't know if you can buy this online or I know if you have a local yarn shop that does carry Anzula you can probably request it but this is a really cute one they have this one I was making a decision between either this one or gumball which is it has some more vibrant blues purples pinks and purple pinks blues and violets and teal in them and then choosing this one I don't know, something just called out. Even though, like, I think that the other one is a little bit more my style, something about this one just called out to me. So, I love it. <laughs> and a little bit of a steep price for that one, but that's fine. You get what you pay for. So, and, and Zula is a really great brand. So, if you could ever get some or it's ever in your shop I highly suggest you buy it plus also you're supporting a local dyer here in Fresno uh, she really does take a lot of pride in her work so I can easily say without a doubt that I would recommend her yarn to anybody you know unless you're on a fixed income and you $26 will <laughs> you have to choose between yarn and food but uh even there's been a few times where I've made that decision where I was like I guess I could just eat whatever is in my parents' pantry, which is mostly just bread. Um, <laughs> but uh, the other thing is, I also have some progress on my weaving. So, this is my weaving. As you can see, I've only gone this far. I'm having fun with weaving. I love weaving. The only thing is, so well, first of all, I'll show you what I have. So, 
you can get closer on there. Once again, I'll use my new binder to kind of, there we go. That's what it looks like so far. As you can see, it goes from gray to pink to gray to blue to go back to gray, then pink and gray. Then I'm going to start doing like some tapestry weaving because this is basic weaving where I'm just going back and forth. And so what I do is I move this down. I get my tapestry needle and pass the needle really fast all the way through because this wooden dowel is weaved. Um, it's weaved over and under every other warp. Ooh, what's going on here? It's weird. Um, it's warped over and under every other warp so I can easily pass the needle through. But when I want to go the other direction, I have to place this up here and then very carefully, well, not caref super carefully, but pretty much just with the tapestry needle, I have to weave in over and under manually. And it's a little bit of a time staking process and I wish that it was a little bit more no-brainer like m most other looms are so this way I can just loom and watch TV and relax and enjoy it a little bit more so I think I may have come up with a tool I may have invented a tool that's similar to the tool that they use for other rigid heddles looms and Part of me is just I need to really get on 3D printing because I have a 3D print file for a rigid head loom, a rigid heddle loom. It's all the joints and like turning parts and everything, and even the like shuttle thing with little holes in it. I got really scared because it almost froze, and last time I did that, I lost all my video. <laughs> um, I have it, and I just need to learn to do 3D printing, which I don't think is going to be that hard. I think it's going to be pretty simple. There'll be a day when every household has a 3D printer and kids in kindergarten can easily do it. But for now. <laughs> and organization. That is the next thing that I'm working on. I That was the title of my last video. And this is what my room looked like. So you can see, well, that's not what it originally looked like. I brought out everything and it caused massive chaos. Because it was oh, kind of okay before, but there was just some stuff that just had no place. And if I didn't set my glasses or my car keys or my wallet in a single location, which I have a little cat head candy dish that I put everything in when I first walk in, because if I don't put it down there, and I put it somewhere else, or I drop a remote, I have to tear up my room looking for it. So I decided that I need to streamline a lot of my crafty stuff. I need to figure out what it is that I do and don't have, uh, separate everything, make it just organized so I can easily grab what I need. And so I brought out everything, and I've slowly been working on it. So. This area over here has been somewhat touched. As you can see, there's a hamper at the bottom, which that was not there before. Instead, I had all my craft bags, which are now in the closet in a giant tote. So all of my current projects are in that tote. So I can easily just pull it out and grab one of the bags that I need, put it back on, and then put the tote back and exchange them out if I need to. And now I have the hamper, which used to be all my dirty clothes used to be at the corner of the door, so I could only open my door like about this much because of all the hamper and all the crap that was back there. I also organized underneath my sewing table, which the sewing cabinet has a sewing machine in it that I don't use. Uh, it's a really great sewing machine. It's actually probably one of my better ones, but it's just, I really like the Kenmore because I can go a little bit faster and it's a little bit more heavy duty than the regular secret that I have. So I think I'm going to give away the cabinet to my boyfriend. I organized everything down there which was a lot of um, which was my first sewing um, basket which it's nice it looks really cute it has a little thing on top that's to organize stuff in but 
I needed more. And plus also, if it went to the bottom part, I had no idea what was in there, because it was like the pit from Mortal Kombat. Once it gets knocked in there, it just gets forgotten about, and I was pulling stuff out of there I didn't realize I even had. So what I did is I took everything that was in that one, and in my grandmother's um, sewing basket, and I put it in these clear storage containers. So as you can see, it actually latches off. So now I can access all of my cutting tools, which is nice. So I have all my cutting tools in here, like my regular shears, my rotary cutter, my pinking shears. This thing, I don't know if I ever talked about it on here before, but these are electric cutters. This thing is, okay, so these are my electric cutters. And I, I don't know why these were invented. I don't know if it was just somebody in the 60s or 70s had like a sewing room and, you know, they had their like Ken Moore machine from Sears that was their wonderful olive color and they wanted to show it off to everybody and be like, hey, look, I got the matching Sears Ken Moore scissors <laughs> for fabric. It was... It was a little scary when I first used them. Um, if you've ever seen that Simpsons episode where Homer decides he wants to be a inventor like um, Thomas Edison, that was what using the electric scissors was like when he used the electric hammer. It was like I plugged it in and just went <laughs> straight across like a bunch of this paper, and uh, it was it was an interesting experience. I don't know if that these are just impractical and or if I just need to get more skilled at them. So eventually I will start using these more often, but if anybody has any hints or tips about using these that has ever had one of these, let me know. On the top part, I have all of my basic sewing stuff, so I have my pin cushion, all of my measuring tapes, my sh little small little um, pinking shears, I have my bobbins, my small little like gaugers, and just basic things that I normally use a lot when I'm sewing, and the stuff that belongs to my uh, main Kenmore sewing machine. I have two Kenmore sewing machines. I have the really old one which belongs to my grandma which is super heavy duty and then I have this one which is a little bit newer I can sense that I probably can't do all of the really hard stuff I could do with my grandmother's sewing machine but it's still a really great sewing machine uh, and I also have my hand sewing stuff which is all of my needles and then it has all of my um stuff to hand sew stuff on with my buttons and because I don't have any machines that do buttons. I wish I did. That'd be so amazing if I could just easily do a button. Just put it in my machine with a little hookup. Then I have all of my added accessories like buckles and the D-rings and stuff like that. Then I also have, an, I sorted out my knitting and crochet stuff into one of these little organizers. So yeah, and I've just been going through everything and just seeing what it is that I do and don't need. So I got rid of some of the stuff, some of the stuff that's just unusable. Uh, if I find stuff that is usable that I don't want, I'm probably just going to sell it. Like, I don't think I'll be doing cake decorating as much anymore. I don't think I have the time or the energy to be able to put into that because I'm putting whatever time and energy I do have into knitting and crochet and sewing. So. I have some fun stuff, like my ice cube trays, which I also use for fondant and gum paste that I'm going to keep. Uh, I'm going to keep some of my chocolate stuff, not all of it, obviously, but some of like the really cool things like the skeletons and the mustaches, things you can't really get anymore. Uh, I'll be keeping some of the fondant stuff. I think I'll be getting rid of like 50% of my fondant and gum paste things. And then I'll just be keeping like pretty much the basics to make a great cake. Like if you were taking the Wilton classes that I used to teach, 
maybe most of the stuff that you would use for coarse wood. Uh, maybe the tiered cake pans, but there will probably be a lot of cake pans that I'll be getting rid of, um, either selling or doing something. And let's say the only thing else I've been up to would be this. I'm starting this. So what this is, is this is a, um, it's like a scrapbook. It's a Heidi Swap one. I really like the cover. I wasn't sure at first, but I do like it. Because it's kind of rainbowy, but it's like pinks, greens, teals, and stuff like that. A lot of green, orange. Uh, there was a rainbow one that was like rainbow, it was like white, but like rainbow, like chevrons but um i don't know i feel like this one said me more than the other one even though i really really love classic rainbows and what we'll be going in here is i will be documenting my adventures in spinning and dyeing in here so i'll be putting swatches uh, miniature skeins stuff like that putting them onto pages and then putting them in here so this way everyone will look back and see oh what was it that i was doing how did i get this it'll all be in here and then maybe we can use it as like an informational thing at the yield so maybe if i could part with it maybe i can keep it with the guild and they can use it to show off to people to kind of give them a better understanding of what's what and what everything looks like um that's pretty much been it as far as crafting goes stash enhancements everything. I'm going to get some water. Because I did truck today, so I'm super thirsty because I drink a lot of Red Bull in the mornings. I woke up last night at 10.30 to go to work. I only got like four hours of sleep yesterday. 10.30 p.m. Went to work at 12.30 a.m. this morning. Got off at 9 a.m. Probably fell asleep like around 10 a.m. Woke up like around 2 p.m. and I'm still a little. Mm. <laughs> I could probably go to sleep tonight easily if I wanted to. But uh, I had already shot one video already and saved it. But I noticed I did a lot of ands and ums, like probably a hundred times more than what I have in this video. And there was a lot of my like micro space outs where I just. I forgot simple words like knitting and yarn, <laughs> and I just looked at the at the screen, not knowing what to say. This is a really fun cup. This is as you can see, it's a little panda. My uh, boyfriend wanted to call it kimchi after his favorite drag queen from the last. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, but I said I wanted to name it Panda Montana, and he looked at me like, why would you call it Panda Montana? And I was like, because I can drink tea and coffee out of it and get the best of both worlds. And he just gave me that look of disappointment, like, why would you say that? And uh, I, I really don't like Panda Montana. I never watched it. That was way past my age group, but I don't know. I just thought it was funny, and it's something I just thought about at the moment. But, uh, thank you. Oh, and also, just as far as just a brief personal update, how everything's been, um, things have been doing really good at work. It seems more hectic, and, like, I'm working a lot more the past two weeks than I've ever been, but I feel better about work. As far as the quality of work that I'm doing, um, I've been getting, like, a lot of acknowledgement, which has been really great. Uh, my new manager has just been praising me a lot. He's been telling me how much of an asset I am at work and just really just going over and over again about how great I am. And I feel like I'm part of like his like top workers that really get, help him get things done. And he can see that I really do enjoy my job. And, and I'm glad that someone authentically can see that, you know, like I know my, my, my current managers, my store manager and assistant manager and the people that are also managers before him kind of see that but i mean wow he really like acknowledges it and i really feel like that makes me want to work like three times as hard you know so 
uh, that's been really great. And then plus also, he's brought me up to other managers, and he's told me what they've said, and, you know, it's it's one thing hearing it from the, their managers directly, but it's another to hear what someone's saying that people are, are talking about you, and it's amazing. <laughs> I think, like, that's a little bit, like, better, because it's like, you always, to me, I'm a very unconfident person, so I think to myself, like, are they really, they really, really mean everything they're saying, or are they just saying that because they, you know, I'm super nice and they're super nice and when he told me like you know so and so said this and this and they were like it's about time that someone really like starts acknowledging John for everything he does here at the store and I was just completely floored and so happy to hear that and also just trying to keep at it um, like I said I'm, I really need to just make sure that I'm spending a little bit of time each week on my crafts projects. This way I don't get like I was with my knitting for like a week and a half where I didn't touch it. Um, so if you find yourself in a rut, like you aren't touching your knitting anymore or your crochet, just go to your local yarn shop and see when their like sit down times are. Because most places have a knit night or a knit time where you can just go for free and knit and sit and chat. Luckily, Craftopia here has a... As long as the shop's open, you can come down and sit down and knit as long as you want. Um, Swatches, I know, they have two nights, Thursdays and Sundays. And Yana's has Saturdays uh, afternoons. Um, but that's because Swatches and, and Yana's, they're so busy. They do so many classes and so many things. So it's understandable that they can't be, you know... Uh, have like a sit down whenever you want. I totally respect that because you know Yana, she's she's really amazing and she teaches these really great classes. And I hope that one day I can make the time to take one so I can knit like her. And uh, same thing with S watches. They're always doing amazing things over there. Like they're doing the knitted knockers and crochet knockers, and they're doing all these knit alongs and stuff like that. So it's understandable that they can't have a sit down and knit whenever you want. Like they do at Craftopia. And, well, um, once again, I just want to thank all of my viewers. So if you are a longtime viewer, thank you for coming back, uh, encouraging me to make videos again. I'm really enjoying this. I look forward uh, weekly to making the videos, and I hope I can keep the energy going and keep on making the videos. Uh, I don't fall into a rough spot like I did again. And to all of my new viewers... Um, anybody who's watching for the first time, thank you for joining in. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. Anything I go over, such as patterns or websites or anything like that, I will mention in the description. If you have any comments or questions, you can either leave them in the comment section or you can direct message me. Um, any critiquing I always appreciate, as long as it's constructive. And... I guess just have a great day. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.